Okay, now we're going to discuss what it takes to remelt and reform a gel block, um, which you can't see, but I got one back here. Uh, Clear Ballistics provides instructions on what to do, but to be honest, I found them kind of confusing and very long. I mean, it was a page and a half of instructions. And so over time and over many times of doing this, I've come up with a method that I think is much simpler. I'm going to show you what you need and how to do it. First thing, you need a roaster oven. This is a Hamilton Beach 32182. It's the one that Clear Ballistics recommends. And the main thing you need is one that'll go to at least 275 degrees and ideally has a temperature control like this dial on the front. You need a mold. I highly recommend using the ones from Clear Ballistics because this is a heavy duty, serious mold and, and I've used it many times and it works great. Uh, next thing you need is gloves with a neoprene liner. Uh, these you can get at uh, the kitchen store. You want the most heat proof gloves you can get because this stuff may be as hot as 270 degrees. You want some serious quality gloves on there. Uh, to make things easier or to go faster, I recommend having a lid over the roasting oven. If you don't have a lid in place, if you're just cooking the gel and the heat is all escaping, it'll take two or three times as long to melt the gel. So definitely have a lid. One thing I liked about this Hamilton Beach is that it has an inner pan that you can remove. So when I put the gel block in, I can just rotate this over and use it as a makeshift lid. It's not perfect because it it doesn't fit completely over there and seal it in, but it's infinitely better than not having anything. All right, the actual process of, of dissecting and remelting the block is really simple. It's painfully obvious what you should do. First thing to do, I'm going to save you some trouble, wash your mold. Wash and dry and clean your mold. You want no water in the mold whatsoever, and you also want it clean because any stuff, any dust, any whatever that's in there is going to get into the mixture as it melts and it will ruin the clarity of your block. So wash the mold before you use it. Then when you get to the block, cutting the block is not easy at all. Don't try to cut the block apart. Instead, just tear it in chunks. I found that twisting gives you an easy way to make sure that you rip it apart every time. And I go for an inch square, roughly you know, a cubic inch size chunks. The idea behind tearing the gel apart is that you want to get as much surface area as you can for the heat to affect and also for the liquefied gel to get to. If you put in great big chunks, it'll take longer to melt, just like it would, you know, if you had a great big block of ice versus some crushed ice. Crushed ice is going to melt sooner, uh, so also will the gel block melt sooner. So you tear the block apart and you got to be on the lookout for your projectiles. In this particular block, I have a number of calibration BBs. As you dig into the block, rescue and weigh, measure, or discard the projectiles, but eventually you break the whole block down. Now, I'm not going to bother doing this on camera, but what I'm going to tell you is that I normally get about two-thirds of the block done before the mold is completely full. And so that's where I stop, and I, I actually just put this in the heater as is. Now, in the instructions, they talk about, you know, you, you melt it first, and then you pick it up, and you pour it through a strainer and something else, and then you re-pour it back in the mold, and then you put it back in the... I don't do any of that. You don't have to do any of that. Here's what you do. Once you've broken the mold, the gel block down, you put the mold, in the cooker. I normally put some foil on top of it just for additional heat reflection. I put that pan lid on it and you melt it. Just let it go for, you know, depending on how hot you put the heat, uh, three, four, five hours. Um, the ballistics gel guys at Clear Ballistics, they recommend that you use a heat no hotter than 275 degrees. Uh, which works fine and you can set it on 275 and come back an hour or two later and what will happen is that the gel will have begun to melt and, and shrunk down enough that you can then break up the rest of your gel block and fill it in there and put the lid back in. After about three and a half hours, 
everything should be completely melted. Maybe there's a, a core in the very center of the block that hasn't melted. Let it keep going. And then finally, when everything's melted, you're gonna see that there's still a bunch of bubbles. There's bubbles on the surface and there's bubbles throughout the gel. You're not done yet. You gotta get rid of those bubbles because the bubbles will mess up the calibration of the block. You want, when you fire a bullet into the block, you want it to traverse through the ballistics gel medium, not through empty pockets of air, which is what a bubble is. It's an empty pocket of air. So get rid of all the bubbles just by leaving the heat on. The bubbles will rise to the top and disappear. Now, what about temperature management and thermometers? I initially got me some thermometers to work with this. I got a, well, first thing I tried to get was a fancy digital candy thermometer, uh, which is fine for taking a spot reading, but don't leave this in the block because this will totally melt. Ask me how I know. Uh, so I then got a candy thermometer that is made to stay in. It's not digital, it's analog. You can Clip that on the side there and keep track of the temperature of the gel. Uh, clear ballistics warns do not let the gel get above 280 degrees or it will start ruining the gel. So they, they say set the thermometer at 275. That's okay. I'm going to tell you what I have done. I'm not recommending you do this, but I'm telling you, I've put it up when I get impatient. I've put it up to 350, even 400 degrees because what happens is that will not make the gel get hotter until it's fully melted. This is just a scientific principle. The, the energy that the oven is, is giving, the heat energy, can either go to raise the temperature or it can go to break down the bonds and, and melt the gel. So as long as there is some gel that hasn't melted, it will not get any hotter. It will rise up to, I guess it's about 180 degrees is where the gel starts to melt and it will stay at that temperature until all the gel is melted. And once all the gel is melted, then it can start rising up in heat. Uh, so I used to use the thermometer and keep an eye on it and basically it would get to 180 and then by the time it was fully done and all the bubbles were gone, it'd be at 200. Okay, it's time to stop. So I don't even actually bother with the thermometer anymore. Uh, there's no real need to. As long as I shut the heat off by the time the bubbles are, are done rising, it's done. One last thing I'm gonna bring up about the melting process, do it outside. Don't do it in the oven. Your wife will kill you. And if you're the wife, you're gonna wish you hadn't done this. When you do this outside, do it on the back porch, do it on the in the garage, something like that. You wanna make sure that it's covered so debris doesn't get in, but you don't want this melting in your house. It's They say it's non-toxic, I'm sure it is, but still you can smell it and I don't, I don't want that stuff going in my lungs. I, I don't really know exactly what's in here. I, I don't mind, I don't want it going in the lungs. I also don't want it done in the oven because uh, as it heats, um, you know, you can see some vapor in the air and that means it's coating on the inside of the oven. And in my roaster oven here, I can see a, a thin layer, a thin sheet of, of the gel material on that. I, I don't want that in the oven where we're cooking dinner, you know? So I say, take it outside and cook it out there and just keep an eye on it. Go out every hour, every half hour and check on it. One last thing about melting the gel blocks, if you want to speed it up even more, uh, don't fill the mold all the way to the top before you start melting. You can put in, you know, fill it a quarter of the way and then that little chunk will melt pretty quickly and then you come in and you tear off more chunks and dip them or, or throw them into the melted pool and what'll happen is that the, the liquid stuff will wrap all around it and that will make the new chunks melt a lot faster. So you could fill it up some and then come out half hour later, tear off some more and fill it up some more. And doing this repeatedly, you'll shave about half an hour, maybe 45 minutes off of the entire block melting process. The downside is you gotta pay a lot more attention to the block and constantly be going out and constantly tearing and constantly filling it up. Uh, the alternative is just to fill this all the way up, let it melt, and then refill it once with the remaining third. Either way works. If you want the fastest possible melting time, do it piecemeal. Uh, but either way, don't let the gel get over 270 degrees. It doesn't need to get anywhere near that hot. Once it's melted, it's melted. Once the bubbles are gone, you're done. Pull the plug, and that's when you use your 
gloves here. I mean, you're using the gloves to remove and put the lid on, obviously, but then you use the gloves to pull this out, set it aside, and then use your second mold and start melting your second block if you've got two blocks. I find it's, you can easily remelt two blocks in one day if you have two molds. You could do three blocks in a day if you had three molds, but if you only have one mold, it's gonna take a while because you have to leave the gel in the mold to cool, and that means you can't start melting another block until you've pulled this cooled block out. So there's a big delay. So if you do end up like I did, I ended up with a bunch of these blocks um, and you wanna remelt them quickly, having more than one mold can really speed up the process. Once you've got your gel block thoroughly melted and it's sat for a good 14 hours, so it's nice and cool and room temperature, it's time to get it out of the mold. This is not the easiest task in the world. It's not too difficult. What I normally do with this is I just try to jam my fingers in between the gel and the side of the mold and pull it away. And you can see that as the gel pulls away, you can see it change color through the gel, not color, but intensity. You'll know that you're getting away. And once you've loosened it around all the edges, then it's time to actually extract it. So we'll go through what I do. All right, pull the edges away. And you will get a little bit of forearm strength from having done this. What you want to do is you want to keep your palms wide, your fingers, use them all, because you don't want to tear the gel. If you put just one finger down there and, and really pulled against it, you might end up tearing the gel. But what I want to do is just Pull it nice and loose from the edges. Turn that around so I can get this side. And once it's pulled apart from all the sides, it's time to try actually extracting gel block. Now what I do with that, I turn it up sideways because I want to use the weight of the gel. Gel weighs you know, 18 pounds, let's use that weight in our favor. And I've got a sheet of cling wrap here, ready for the gel to go out onto. So again, just jam your fingers in there, and try to get to the very end here. If you, once you get your fingers over the end of that gel block, it's home free, totally home free. So pull it and keep going deeper in until you get it. There we go. And then just flop it out. Onto the clear wrap. And like I said before, you can polish it at this point if you really, really want it to be clear at the shooting range. But I find that the marks that the clear wrap leaves in it kind of defeat the purpose. So I like to polish it afterwards when I'm doing the video. So just wrap the block up. You want to make sure that you wrap it all the way up. Surround the whole block with cling wrap before you put it back in the box. Now I transport it in the clear ballistics box. You can see this is kind of beat to crud because I've remelted and transported these blocks so many times. I transport them in the block in the uh, clear ballistics box, but don't just put the gel straight in there or it will stick. It will adhere to it because the surface of the gel, it, it will adhere to the paper and stick in there. So definitely wrap the entire thing up in the cling wrap before you put it in the box and then you're good to go to the range.